you today in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I'm again honoured that you've decided to tune in today and I hope that you're going to be blessed even as I would share God's word with you. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a subject entitled, I couldn't but now I can. I couldn't but now I can. And if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 13. And we're going to be reading from verses 10 through to 17. That's Luke chapter 13, reading from verses 10 through to 17. And this is what it says. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and in could no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. And said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. May God bless the reading of his precious word. Now, when you look at a title like the one we're looking at this morning, I couldn't, but now I can, you understand that this is a testimony. It's a testimony of a change that a child of God has experienced through their life's journey traveling with Christ. And... It is one that speaks to me about a time when you couldn't do something. You couldn't change something possibly, but now you can. And so the couldn't would translate in your past and in a time when you couldn't, it would be I cannot. And you know, many times a lot of children of God find themselves being judged harshly because they say, I cannot. I've tried, but... There is nothing that I can do that changes my situation. And so a child of God can be judged harshly. A child of God maybe can find themselves criticized by leaders and those that are spiritual guides in their lives and spiritual mentors in their lives. And they find themselves in a place where they wonder, is there a problem with me that I cannot change it? I'm here today to talk to you about a woman that has the same problem. And for those of you that find yourselves in this place where you feel criticized, you feel like, okay, maybe it's a feeling, maybe I could actually change it, but I find myself stuck for some reason. And it could be down to me feeling like I can't change it, but I should be able to change it. Well, you might find yourself asking, is it a feeling or is it a reality? And you know, for this woman, it is an 18 year reality for her where she is unable to change a situation in her life. The Bible tells me in verse number 11 and in the middle of it that she has an infirmity for 18 years. And so this woman is unable to change it for 18 years. This problem that she has for 18 years is she's bent over. It's a problem that affects her physical body and she cannot change it. The Bible says, and the latter part of the verse says, and could in no way raise herself up. And so she has this problem and it's a problem that has affected her physical body and she has tried to have it changed. She has tried to change it, but unfortunately 
to no avail. The Bible tells us she could in no way raise herself up. And so here all of a sudden, there is an answer to many of us that find ourselves criticized and maybe harshly by the church and by the leaders of the church because they say to us, look, you've been struggling with this problem for so long. You've been in this situation now for three years, four years, maybe 10 years, maybe 18 years like this woman. And by now you should have been able to come out of it. And so maybe you're not trying hard enough. Well, here there's a woman and the Bible testifies about her problem on her behalf and says that she could in no way raise herself up. And so all of a sudden, for those of us that find ourselves trapped in situations where we can't change it, we're trapped in circumstances where we've tried to change it, but we have been unable to change it. We've watched others that have come maybe after us in their Christian journey. And we found that they have accelerated far ahead of us. They've been able to straighten up problems. They've been able to walk uprightly. They've been able to change the things that you and I struggle with. And here you and I are, and we are struggling for 18 years, trying to sort it out. And unfortunately, no avail. Well, the Bible says she could in no way raise herself up. And all of a sudden, you and I are in good company. We are in company with a woman that the Bible's talking about. And she gets her victory, and we're going to get to that. But you and I are feeling a little bit more comfortable. We're feeling a bit more, well, at ease because we've been judged for so long. We've had people criticize us. It's not from a lack of trying. It's not because we have not tried hard enough. It's not because we've not put effort into changing our lives. But the reality is we can in no way raise ourselves up. And you and I find ourselves in that position. Before we get into this woman, I want to remind you of another man who also has a bit of a challenge. He's found in the book of Luke chapter 19 verses 3 to 5. And you might know him, you might not know him. His name is Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus also has a physical problem. The Bible says in verse number three, I want to read it to you. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And so you find that you have a man called Zacchaeus who also has a physical problem. His problem is he is short. You will notice that the Bible says that he is short in stature. And you know, there are certain things that you and I can pray about. There are certain things that we can get divine intervention on and God can change our situation like with that woman. But there are other things that you and I are going to die with. We can't change them. Prayer is not going to change the fact that Zacchaeus is short. Spending time in the word is not going to change the fact that Zacchaeus is short. He has this challenge and it is one that he is going to carry with him to his grave. But Zacchaeus does something. Zacchaeus does something. He uses something that I want you as a child of God to learn how to use. Now, mind you, I'm going to get to those of us that are in situations where we've tried everything, but we can't raise ourselves up. But here, Zacchaeus, by just using what we call the gray matter and exercising the gray matter by using his brains a little bit, he is able to say to himself, I'm short. I can't change that. But temporarily, I can change it. I can climb into something that is already there. It's a tree. It's taller than me. It can support my weight. And so I'm going to climb into it. And by climbing into it, I'm temporarily changing a permanent problem. This problem, when I climb down, I'm going to be short again. But for a moment or for however long I spend in the tree, I'm no longer going to be short. I'm going to be high enough for Jesus to see me. 
And so Zacchaeus is able to temporarily change his permanent problem in order to have Jesus come into his life permanently. And you know, that's something that you and I as children of a living God need to learn how to do. We need to learn how to recognize what are the things in our life that can't change. Prayer is not going to change it. Fasting is not going to change it. But there are other things that we can do to elevate ourselves. So the tree is planted there many years before Zacchaeus comes on the scene. And so Zacchaeus is able to climb into something that already exists and temporarily change his position from being short to being tall. Tall enough for Jesus to see him. Now, there's another thing that Zacchaeus is able to do. He anticipates where Jesus is going. Now, he looks at where the crowd is. He looks at where Jesus is. And he anticipates that Jesus is going to be there just now. So he gets to where Jesus is going to be. Before Jesus gets there, he climbs up this tree and Jesus sees him. The rest of it you know Jesus calls him down and salvation visits his house that day. And so Zacchaeus is able to elevate himself. He's able to do things that can elevate him temporarily, yes, but sufficiently so, so that Jesus can come into his life and Jesus can change his situation. We go back to this woman. The Bible says, she could in no way raise herself up. Now, this is a different problem that she's finding. It's a different problem that she's encountering. There's something that I just passed over in our introduction. The Bible says, who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Now, there's a spirit of infirmity on this woman. And when it comes to Zacchaeus, the Bible does not say he has a spirit of being short in stature. But when it comes to this woman, the Bible makes it clear that she can't raise herself up. But the real problem is, even though it's presenting on the external of her life, even though what's happening with her is presenting in a way that she's bent over and she can't raise herself up, so her back's bent over and she's in a slouch position, she can't straighten herself up, she can't raise herself up, she can't do anything about that, but the problem is a spiritual one. And so with Zacchaeus, it's not a spiritual problem, the fact that he's short, that's genetic. And so many of us are trying to rebuke genetics. We're trying to rebuke the things that God has divinely put into our lives. He wants us to be short. He wants us to be tall. He wants some of us to be fat. He wants some of us to be thin. God's made us that way. We can't change it. Praying about it, fasting about it, isn't going to change it. But there are spiritual issues which you can't temporarily change anything about it. There's something that's wrong spiritually with this woman, but it's causing her to present with an external problem, which is she's bent over. And many of us are trying to treat the external issues of life. But meanwhile, the real problem is a spiritual matter. And in order to remedy a spiritual matter, there's only one place that you can go to to sort that out. The Bible starts in verse number 11 by saying, there was a woman. There was a woman. And you know, when I read the word there, I straight away ask myself, where's there. Where's there? The Bible answers that question for us. In verse number 10, it says, now he being Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. The Bible doesn't only give us the where, it gives us the when. And so there's a where and there's a when. She is where, she is in the synagogue, she is in church. And when is she in church? It's the Sabbath. And that's wonderful. I like this because here's a woman She has this problem. It's a problem that's presented in her life now for 18 years. Now, you'll remember that Zacchaeus was not in the synagogue. He was in the street. And so there are issues that are not spiritual. There are issues that have nothing to do with the war in the heavenlies that the Bible tells us about that you can address in the street. You can climb up a tree in the street and you can address your issues of being short temporarily, yes, but you can address them 
on the street. But when it comes to the spiritual issues of a man, when it comes to the spiritual issues of a woman, when it comes to the spiritual issues that the children of God are encountering, you can't address those things outside. There is only one place that those things can be addressed. And that is within the body of Christ. That is when you are in church. Now, the trouble that you and I find in this season is that we can't get to church. We can't go to the buildings anymore. We can't go to these places of worship that we've been attending for so long. For me personally, I can't remember a time when I've not attended church for such a long time. And I'm certain that it's true for many of you also. But here's the thing. Do you know that Jesus already changed that problem a long time ago? The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and between verses 17 and 19, he's asking his disciples who they say he is. And they respond, people say you are this, people say you are that. And then he says, who do you say I am? And Peter gets it right. He says to Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And so Jesus responds, and I'm going to read his response. It's found in verse number 17 of Matthew chapter 16. And reading through to verse 19, this is what it says. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Wonderful. How's that? Yes, Jesus, he's talking to Peter and he changes this problem. He shifts it out of the bricks and the mortar into people. He says to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That means he realizes when Peter gets the answer right, that Peter has shifted his game to a supernatural platform. And he's speaking in a spiritual realm when he says that you are Jesus, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And so when he says that, he has shifted his game from flesh and blood into the spiritual realm. And so Jesus also shifts his church out of the physical, out of the building, out of the bricks and the mortar and the foundations. He shifts it into people. He says, you are Peter and you are the rock on which I'm going to build my church. Now, he's using Peter, who's made up of flesh and blood, and he's saying that you are the rock you are the foundation on which I'm going to build my church, then I can't see Jesus taking the bricks and placing bricks on top of Peter. No, he's going to place other people on top of Peter. He's going to build his church on top of this rock. And do you know that he's not changed that philosophy? There are rocks on the earth today. There are men and women on the earth today that Jesus has called his rocks that he's building his church on and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now, this is the challenging part. Jesus already changed it back in the New Testament. He says, you are the church. You are the rock. You, the people, I'm building my church. It's the body of Christ. And this is now my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against that. And so Jesus already shifted it out of the building many years ago. We've gone back to the buildings. We've gone back into these structures and these places. Now, mind you, before you get carried away with that, let me just be very quick to tell you, I myself, I pastor within a building. We have a church building. But I have come to a realization many years ago, as God called me to pastor that church, the bricks and the mortar, that's not the church. It is just a facility that allows us to gather, but that in itself is not the church. Jesus has already shifted us out of the building. And again, in this season, again, in this hour, he has shifted the church 
out of the building. We've been stuck in there for too long. And now the trouble is, you and I, we don't know what to do. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, between verses 24 and 25, it encourages us not to forsake the gathering of the saints. And so it encourages the gathering of the saints. You and I, for years, we've been told by our pastors, we've been told by our leaders, don't forsake the gathering of the saints. Jesus, in the book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse number 20, he says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. We realize that the word of God is saying, do not forget the gathering of the saints. And Jesus is saying, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. Now, here's the thing about that. Today, as I speak to you, I'm speaking via this technology that we're using and you know I myself I haven't been made I know this very well for this type of device I mean this face doesn't suit this device but here I am I'm coming to you via this platform you might be sitting on your own at home and if you are then it's two of us today talking to each other it's two of us today connecting with each other it's two of us today coming together as Jesus said and guess what where two or three are gathered in his name there he is in the midst now many of you you gathered with your families and you might be watching with your families and so there's more than two there's three or more and here's the thing Jesus is with us in the midst he has shifted it outside of the church a long time ago and so I want to encourage you here this morning, if you know of people that have not been connected in this season, those people that you might be aware of because the church building is closed, they no longer have the opportunity to connect or maybe they don't want to gravitate towards this facility that you now have, which is this device. It might be your cell phone. It might be your laptop. It might be your TV. It might be your iPad, your tablet, whatever it is. They don't want to gravitate to that. I want you to be able to encourage them in this season, because let me tell you something. When we connect like this, when we come together like this, even using this platform, Jesus is with us in the midst of us. And when he's with us in the midst of us, the same thing that happened to this woman, it can happen to you and I. Because this woman, she's connecting still. She's got this problem. 18 long years, nothing has changed. For 18 years, she's suffering. For 18 years, she's bent over. She can't straighten it up. Not prayer has changed it. Nothing has changed it. Even encountering the men and the women of God within the kingdom of God has not been able to change this problem. But because she keeps coming together on the Sabbath, because she keeps coming together with the body of Christ, gathering with the saints, all of a sudden, what couldn't change in 18 years, it's possible for it to change. And I want you to remember, you might be struggling with issues and you're saying to me, Myron, I don't know how to change it. Well, let me tell you how you change it. You keep gathering. You keep connecting with the body of Christ. You keep within the body of Christ and I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time before what happened with that woman happens with you. And I believe this morning that this morning is that opportunity. I believe Jesus is here with us in the midst of us. And I believe that he wants to connect with you like how he connected with this woman that suffered for 18 years. This woman that couldn't change it. She's tried everything. She couldn't be like Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he was able to change it. She couldn't. And here she is though. She's not outside of the kingdom. She's still in the kingdom. Still searching for the answers to her problem. She's not received it yet. But she's still coming. And I want you to be encouraged this morning. For you that might be just like me. There are things in my life that I can't change. I've tried to change them. I'm still trying. But guess what? It doesn't separate me from the kingdom. It's not separating me from the body of Christ. It's not keeping me outside of fellowship. It's not keeping me from gathering with the saints. I Seek to gather with the saints. I look for opportunities to connect. And I want to encourage you this morning. You might be suffering with issues. You might be suffering with problems. I want you to know. If you've tried to change your problems. If you've tried to change these challenges. And you have 
fail to change them. It is quite possible that it is a spiritual issue. And to change a spiritual issue, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. And where is Jesus? Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Now this morning, verse number 12 says, when Jesus saw her, Jesus saw her. She's bent over, but she's in the right place. She's bent over, but she's not forsaken the gathering of the saints. She's bent over, but she's still connecting with the saints of God. And Jesus sees her. For every one of you that has been suffering with a challenge, for every one of you that has been having a problem that you've not been able to change, you're still bent over, but you've stayed in fellowship. You've stayed connected, especially in this season. I want you to know this morning, Jesus sees you. This morning is your moment when Jesus sees you. And you know, many times when you have been trying to change something and you fail to change it, many times people pass you by. They say, well, well, okay, that's sister so-and-so, that's brother so-and-so. They've been like that for many years. They're not going to change shame. We just leave it like that. And many times people stop seeing you. But I'm glad, I'm glad that Jesus is not like the people of God. Jesus still sees you and I. You and I that are suffering with conditions that we've been fighting with, we've been wrestling with, we've been trying to change it. It's not for a lack of trying. We've tried to change it, but we've failed to change it. But guess what? This morning is your moment. Jesus sees you. He sees her. And you know, that's one thing to see you, but Jesus doesn't stop there. The Bible says he called her to him. And I want to tell you here this morning, be encouraged, child of God, because this morning Jesus sees you. And because you've kept in fellowship, because you've kept connecting with the body of Christ, because you've kept connecting with the saints of God, now he's going to draw you closer to him. He calls you to him. And I don't know about you, but in this season, I need a closer walk with Jesus, a closer walk than I've ever had before. And you know what? You can't get closer than when Jesus calls you to him. He calls the woman to him. This woman that has had this 18 year old problem, all of a sudden Jesus sees her because she stays connected. All of a sudden Jesus sees her because she's in the place where she ought to be. It's the time that she ought to be there. It's her moment and she receives something from Christ. Here's what happens. Jesus calls her to him. And I believe Jesus is calling many of you here this morning. Are you ready to receive the call of Jesus? Are you ready to respond to the call of Jesus here this morning, child of God? He calls her to him and then he says to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. He says to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Wow, that's powerful. This woman has suffered with this condition. For 18 years, she's tried to change it. She couldn't change it. Here's a moment. All of a sudden, Jesus sees her. Jesus calls her to him. And he says to her, Woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. Now, if you go back to what Jesus said to Peter, he said to Peter, You are the rock on which I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. How's that? And Jesus says to her, Woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. When you get together with the body of Christ, when you get together with the saints of God, these issues that are crippling you, these issues that are challenging you, these issues that have attached themselves to your life and you can't get rid of them, these spirits that have cling to your life and caused you to bend over, caused you to not walk uprightly, you might 
be suffering from all types of conditions because of these spirits that have attached themselves to you. It is a spiritual challenge. And for a spiritual challenge, you need to take it to the heavenly place. But here's what Jesus has given us the power to do. He has said to Peter, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loosen on earth is loose in heaven. And Jesus says to this woman, woman thou art loose. Hallelujah. He's given us that power. And this morning I'm saying to you, I don't know who you are. I don't know what your challenges are. I don't know what your problem is, but you might be bent over. You might have an issue that you're struggling to change. You might have a problem that you can't change. And God's given us the keys. I believe whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And this morning I'm declaring over your life, I'm speaking over over your life I don't care what your situation is you are loose this morning in Jesus name you are loose this morning in Jesus name child of God you are loose this morning hallelujah you have connected with God you've stayed connected with the people of God you've not forsaken the gathering of the saints even during the season in fact you've looked to get closer to the saints during the season. You've looked for more opportunities to connect with the people of God during the season. And because of that, I'm saying to you, Jesus has seen that. And this morning you are loosed from your infirmity. Whatever's crippled you, whatever's held you back, whatever's bent you over, whatever stopped you from moving forward, whatever's kept you locked up, whatever's kept you weighed down, whatever's restricted your movement, you are loosed from your infirmity infirmity this morning in Jesus name hallelujah the Bible says in verse number 13 and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God this morning I'm encouraging you that as I'm going to go to prayer with you now, that you would stretch forward your hands. And as an act of faith, I'm going to stretch my hand out to you. And as I stretch out my hand, I'm believing by faith that my hand is being laid over your life this morning. And whatever that situation is, there's going to be an immediate change. There's going to be an immediate transaction in your life. There's going to be an immediate thing where whatever you couldn't do before, now you can do it. Whatever you were restricted from before, now there's a full release in Jesus' name. Child of God, if that's you, I'm encouraging you. Would you stand up with me? Stretch your hands forward to whatever device you're watching on this morning. And I'm going to pray with you. Hallelujah. Father, this morning, as an act of faith, I'm laying my hands on your people this morning. In every situation, in every season, wherever they are, Father, Whatever the condition is, whatever's holding them back, whatever's restricting them, whatever's confining them, whatever Father is bending them over, Father, in Jesus' name, I pronounce over their lives that they are loosed in Jesus' name. And Father, it is done. There's a loosening not only here on earth, but there's a loosening in heaven. And so whatever has been restricted here, there's also been a restriction on their lives from heaven. But this morning, as we loosen whatever it is in their lives on the earth this morning, it is also being loosened in heaven. And so, Father, there's an opening up, not just on the earth. There's an opening up, not just here where we can see it, but there's an opening up in the kingdom of heaven over their lives this morning in Jesus name. And Father, from this day forward, there's an immediate straightening up. Immediately, they're going to be made straight. Father, whatever the condition is, whether it's pornography, whether it's adultery, whether it's homosexuality, Father, whatever it is, whether it's abuse, whether it's substance abuse, whether it's addiction, Father, whatever it is, in Jesus' name, from this day forward, it is done. And all of God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Well, child of God, I hope that you were blessed this morning. I'm expecting there to be an overflow 
of testimonies of breakthrough in the lives of the people of God. And this morning, I want to encourage you, stay connected, stay focused, come together. Don't forsake the gathering of the saints. I look forward to seeing you again. Same time, same place. Till then, God bless you. Hallelujah.